gun control for us is a fantasy. <laughs> in a way that like people say, well, you're being unrealistic about printing a gun. I think it's more unrealistic now, especially going forward, to think you could ever control this technology. Two thousand twelve was a bloody year in America, one that saw sixteen mass shootings in fifteen different states. The violence led Helen O'Neill of the Associated Press to dub it the Year of the Gun. It all came to a head on December fourteenth in Newtown, Connecticut. Okay, the units in the pool. I got uh, bodies here. Let's uh, get here one that morning, 20-year-old Adam Lanza entered Sandy Hook Elementary and killed 20 children and six adults before taking his own life. In the hard days to come, that community needs us to be at our best as Americans, and I will do everything in my power as president to help. In the wake of the tragedy, President Obama announced 23 executive actions meant to curb gun violence. Included were universal background checks, as well as bans on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. In defiance, the NRA and other pro-gun activists stepped up campaigns that directly oppose any new gun control regulations. In the midst of this political firestorm is Cody R. Wilson, a 25-year-old graduate student and self-described crypto anarchist. Cody is trying to put an end to the gun control debate with 3D printing. As one of the key figures in the wiki weapon movement, his goal is to produce and publish a file for a completely 3D printed firearm, one that anyone can download and then create with the right tools. He does this under the banner of his Austin, Texas based company, Defense Distributed. 3D printing or additive manufacturing works like this. A computer aided design or CAD file is created. That file is then sent to a 3D printer. The printer then builds the object in the CAD file by starting at the base and applying a series of layers. At the end of the process, a 3D printed item is born. So how will the ability to self-manufacture untraceable firearms affect the gun control debate? Motherboard traveled to Austin to get Cody Wilson's perspective. So this is my warehouse. Basically, it's a space that we've been using since August. We have a 3D printer on site, which means you know, when you get a federal firearms license, your activity and the location are all tied together with the license. So I can't have the license and go do things somewhere else. I have to have it at a location. And this is the object uh, connects printer that we've been using from the very beginning. Our very first low receiver is printed here. You know, hooked it up to an upper and fired it. So the project begins and no one will listen to you. Okay, so this is uh, testing the printed lower with an AR-57 upper. You fight just to be heard. You break it. And then something changes and then you're heard. We hypothesized a gun control future, right? Even, even when they weren't coming for us. Back. You said that three or four months ago. That's right. Joe Biden, this is no country for old men. We really don't think it's a stunt, man. I, I think the state's now making it easier for us to prove this point, whatever this permanent assault weapon ban is going to be. How's that national conversation going? Is this guy a hero or a villain? That's a good question. By Defense Distributed in Austin, Texas. My partner, Ben Denio, the guy who basically came up with the idea with me, we were on the phone and Ben was like, you know, we could be like arms manufacturers, that'd be cool, right? And like, yeah, you know. What about 3D printing, you know? And at that point we weren't aware that anyone had done it or, or was trying to. And I said, you know, like, you know, if we could print a gun, I, you know, other people could do this. Like, what if we gave it away, you know, open source style? You know, what would that mean? And we realized, wow, like, this is really attractive. You begin with the file. Often you have it in CAD, it's parametric, you can edit it. But you say, well, we don't know how this works, so you test it in software because that's cheaper. Then you find your printer. You know, what material does that printer use? And you say, okay, I'd like this material. Let's see what this can do. 
you know, you wait 12 hours, you wait seven hours, you might wait a day. Okay, now we have a piece. And in the case of low receivers, it's easy. I mean, the thing, it's not dangerous if it fails. Defense Distributed is currently focused on designing a durable lower receiver, which is the mechanism that houses the trigger. All of their lower receivers to this point have been designed for the highly customizable AR-15, the same type of gun used in the Sandy Hook massacre. You know, we couldn't have predicted Sandy Hook and, and some of these other events, but people say, you know, where do you think your project fits within this greater discussion about gun control? If we make a Second Amendment argument, it's all the way, it's to the limit. But I don't like to make it about the Second Amendment or gun control at all, it's more radical for us. Like there are people from all over the world downloading our files and we say good, you know, we say you should have access to this. You simply should. We left the warehouse and traveled across town to Cody's apartment, which doubles as Defense Distributed HQ. It is also home to his private arsenal. All the magic that the ATF loves to regulate happens right in here. Uh, so this is the firearm in commerce. None of this is serialized. You know, you can order this right through the mail. You know, if you're 12 years old, you can buy it online. You know, which I think is a thing of beauty. I like fitting the clear piece to it because you can kind of see everything inside. The only problem that this piece has is it just simply can't take some of the recoil forces. Uh, and I think we can fix that. So this is a 1,080 rounds of corrosive 545 by 39. What's great right now about America <laughs> <laughs> you can buy ammunition online, you know, right? And this is post Sandy Hook craze ammo I found, good deal. The question that I hear a lot is, well, why does anyone need, you know, an ammunition clip from more than 30 rounds, you know, or 30 rounds? Why does anyone need that? Don't, don't you know they can do all kinds of, of harm with that? Why shouldn't we limit their reload times? But I think there's an error there, and I can, like, demonstrate it in other ways. Well, why does anyone need two houses? Or why does anyone need to make more than $400,000? You hear it every day. It's just a, a, a kind of dim view of human spontaneity, like, because we're so free, everything must be prohibited. I've only let like one other crew up here. Canada Global News. Just because they're so, <laughs> they're just like the terrorism, like they're just so terrified by it. For historical purposes, right, this is a pre-banned semi-auto. This is what it used to look like, kids. But if I could do it over, if I knew that there'd be a band coming, I'd get into the AR, because I mean, you're never gonna find 545 laying around. This is like version three of our lower, and in fact, our first really successful like step from our first test. And so this was our first um, piece that, that could take us to like 100 rounds. And like the design of the AR system allows this. I mean, people have carved lowers out of wood. You know, this isn't, we're not trying to say like, oh, you know, here it is. We're trying to prove a point. They're like, look, you can print this out of plastic. And just to take the New York Times point specifically, you can do this in your bedroom. You know, it's to prove this political point that look, yeah, gun control doesn't mean what it meant in 1994. I'm Nick Bilton. I'm a columnist for the New York Times and lead writer for the New York Times Bits blog. Um, and I cover technology and privacy and culture and uh, the things that are changing in society as a result of those. When you first see something that's printed out um, in three dimensions, it kind of blows your mind a little bit. And so I'd always tracked this technology as I'd been a reporter at the Times. And one day I was on Thingiverse, which is a website which allows you to upload parts for 3D printers and then download them. Um, and I came across a gun part and I was kind of blown away. I was like, what is this thing? Um, and this, the more I started to research, the more I started to find out that there was a very, very small group of people that were exploring building um, a 3D gun. Thingiverse.com, which is kind of like known in the hobby or the maker community to be like this repository of community information for 3D printing, it decided to take unilateral action and just remove all these gun-related files. And, you know, it seems pretty clear it was a response to Sandy Hook. So, look, you know, without even judging what they're doing, it just is an act of censorship in my mind. Yeah, they have, a terms, they have a terms of service that say, well, you can't have gun files, but they had hosted those files, some of them for up to like over a year. But those files immediately went down and we recognized, okay, you know, people don't know, at least in the maker community, where to go now. So we decided to launch defcad.org and hosted all the files that they took down. And then since then, people have now doubled uh, the files that we have, just sending us files. I, I get files at least once a day, you know, sometimes more. Oh, cool, the Blaze article's out people rushing to download online blueprints. So it's like, you know, and this will only reinforce what's going on. So it's a piece about our site, DevCAD, talking more or less about how, you know, there's a virtual rush on, oh yeah, I posted this list of all, 
the government visitors to our site. Um, okay, there's not like strong sharing or anything on it yet, but. Cody Wilson had been featured in Wired, I believe, and then he'd also kind of made the news as his 3D printer had been taken away after he'd put a video online um, explaining what he was gonna do. On September 26, 2012, Cody was notified that the 3D printer he had recently began leasing was being repossessed. The manufacturer's reasoning? Cody's lack of a federal firearms license and his public statements regarding the intended use for the printer. Well, um, so this is, these boxes are the Uprint SC Plus printer. This is as far as I had gotten. So just wanted to tell you guys why you were taking this? No. Okay, I was just, they didn't say anything about it? No. So for the record, I was trying to print guns with that printer. Um, and they took it away because I was trying to print guns with it, just to, oh, that's cool. just to let you know. When I called him up and we spoke, he just actually got, he just left the ATF's um, offices. They'd been actually discussing what is legal and what is not. This was an entirely new thing. They knew that it was illegal to own this part for a gun without having it registered and so on. But when you can make the part for the gun, that you know changes the whole course of the conversation. Okay, that's the best way to talk about it. This whole piece, you know, begins from an Aegis file that can be CNC milled into like a, you know, a metal receiver. It's, it's just not built for being in plastic. So when we had fired our first one, we noticed a lot of give in the back of the piece. It was bouncing, it was flexing, and then the recoil of the gun tore right through uh, this buffer tower. So we doubled the thickness all the way around. And we thought, you know, even, even marginally, that improves the strength, especially in the object material we were using. I'm kind of out here with only two or three people helping in Austin. We concentrate our efforts on lowers and like I'm just just now starting with magazines. Uh, in fact, the whole operation has like pivoted. We've tooled, I've got like four or five guys, really all the people that I know are talented in SolidWorks, working on high capacity magazines. It proves the point much better than the lower receiver does. Um, you can't ban a box and a spring. This is a Colt M16, and a printed high capacity magazine. You know, we come out and we say, yeah, look, we're willing to look like idiots, you know, but the interest is in preserving firearms on the internet. And people like that message, you know, despite this whole kind of idea of like, you know, democratic consensus. I mean, there's a lot of people who are interested, so they do whatever they can. Um, we get donations every day, you know. Cody's 24 years old. When I was 24 years old, I was reading books about, you know, Israel and Gaza and believed that there were this kind of conspiracy and that. And, and it's part of who we are, it's part of what we do, and it just happens that Cody has, has, has decided to stick with guns as his, as his thing that he's going to, to, to fight for. There's this Fukuyamaist idea that like history had ended after the Cold War, right? And that like if we could just tweak neoliberal democracy, everything's going to be fine forever. You know, that like somehow this is like the final political form. I mean, this is ridiculous. And like, and you can see it. There's, there's no evidence of a political program anymore in the world, in America. There aren't genuine politics. There's the media telling you Barack Obama versus, you know, versus Mitt Romney is like the epic clash of ideology when we both know they're globalist neoliberals. I mean, they both exist to preserve like the interest of this relatively autonomous class of Goldman Sachs bankers. You know, he believes that he's he's doing the right thing, and that that he is kind of perpetuating this 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 kind of technology and, and, and looking at what it will be. But I also think that there is definitely a part of a part of what he's doing for attention. I mean, I got the reader email I got on that gun piece was was phenomenal, and a, a large majority of it was why are you giving this kid attention? It's clear that that this is why he's doing it. I I don't remember a lot of, about my exchange with with Nick, but I, it was like very matter of fact. He was like, you know, why? believe it's worth doing. You know, the piece disappointed me a little bit. He's like, you know, you know, now felons and children and the insane, okay, blah, 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 you know, and this man wants children to have guns. I was like, all right, fine, you know, take the easy road, fine. You know, but at least he was saying, you know, it's intentionally disruptive, that's true. A New York Times reporter sensationalizing something? No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, you know, what's really interesting is, so as someone who's been covering 3D printers since they were, were essentially becoming into the mainstream a little bit, right? 
um, I have seen that the people that are interested in them are teenagers. Um, and so my thought when I, when I heard about what Cody was up to um, was the fact that the first people that are probably going to use these are, are, are going to be kids. The reality is he could be the canary in the coal mine that is showing us what the future may be. Right. So we're at one of the service bureaus that helps us out, basically one of our printers north of Austin. Uh, we come here to prototype a lot of our designs. This one's good because, well this particular printer is good because we can hop on this almost any time we want. Uh, the volume of the machine is such that we can just kind of come in uh, as with other pieces that are being printed. I truly do believe that in the next decade, that the majority of Americans will have a 3D printer in their home. I truly believe that. Um, they were printing out cups and plates and, and furniture and all these different things. And some of those people will be printing out weapons with that. And I think that that's something that we should be talking about now, not waiting until it happens um, a decade from now. The science fiction writers that we all grew up, they imagine worlds where technology solves problems. Uh, they don't imagine worlds where it creates problems and kills people. When Bree and MakerBot and those guys developed these 3D printers, they imagined people making clothes hooks and baby pins and all of these wonderful things that make the world a better place. They had no concept, none of us had any concept, that these things would be used to create weapons that would kill people. You have people like Cody that come along um, and look at something that you think is a cute little kitten and realize that he can program it to kill people. Other people can stand on our shoulders and, and learn from what we've done and take it farther. We reached out to Bree Pettis, who is CEO of MakerBot and co-founder of Thingiverse, but he refused to comment on this story. Technology always moves quicker than the law. So, you know, it was six years before Facebook was actually held accountable for all the privacy things that they'd done um, by the FTC, right? Um, six years and a billion users um, before the FTC actually caught up to, to the things that they'd done. And this is happening now with 3D printers and guns. I've, I've read a lot of the criticisms, the back and forth in the maker community and, and the tech community about, well, you know, 3D printing is like desktop printing. You know, no, it's not. It's nothing like it at all. It's not going to be the same. And, you know, who can know? I, I do see how there's materials like carbon morph coming out. There's, there's complex materials coming out, even for cheap printers in unexpected ways. And I, I think if complex materials can keep being developed for 3D printing, it is going to be what some people are saying about it, a, a, a real step forward. Some people are willing to run all the way with it. Maybe we're some of them. We're like, you know, oh, whole guns, you know. But it's a vision of something, you know. Thank you, man. That's good. Mm -hmm. So here's the piece we picked up. So this is like, I think revision, was it three? Uh, Do you yeah. remember the file? Yeah. Stained and everything? Yep, this is yeah. a black coating on it, so. so. That's badass. It's not threaded? Yeah. No. We got this. I got my tap wrench to work finally okay. after the other cool. day. We're printing two magazines today, like, they're both 30 round. And the point is just a demonstration. So one's a USGI mag, it probably won't work very long, uh, but one of these shells I think really will. But anything over 10 at this point proves a point. The only things recognized and like promulgated in this culture are like kinds of irreversible things, you know, progress, growth. To have a symbolic gift like the printable gun does, com does so much ideological damage and violence to these ideas. You hear these progressives talk all the time about the wrong side of history, like somehow we're going to get to some result and it's all going to be whole and good and we say no, here's an element of reversibility and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like the intelligence and transparency of evil itself. It can't be ignored. A supporter of Defense Distributed joined us for the field test. He asked that we not use his real name. Hey, you know, Feinstein's bill, right, would regulate semi-autos harsher than fully automatic weapons. Wow. If it was to be passed today as it was proposed. You think it's all right? I see that hammer spring in there on the right? 
firearms are so demonized as something that's going to hurt somebody, but what a firearm actually is is a tool, and it depends on how you would like to utilize it. And you can't really ban something based upon it, the individual intent. With all these mass killings going on, it was their intent to do that. If they really wanted to do it, they wouldn't need a firearm. They would do whatever it takes to do what they want to do. Don't tell me we're going to get all the way out here and this isn't going to work. Oh, we'll make it work. Well, we're going to need like a hammer. As Cody and his associate began fitting the lower receiver to the AR-15, they ran into an unexpected problem. The black dye that the manufacturer applied to the piece made it slightly too thick to fit with the rest of the gun. We've never worked with a dyed piece before. Let's try it, man. Shot. I'm just, I like last time, I just like used the hammer and got it through regardless, so. Nah, just fine. Perfect. Okay. Maybe this um, paint will give it like a 0.01% strength improvement? <laughs> yeah. And we'll break 100 rounds today. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Done. Oh, we broke it? <laughs> okay. I thought it would do well. How many rounds was that? Well, I've got a mag. You know, just pattern. At this point, you know, this is like, what, Gen 3. I mean, we know how this one's going to break, so it's just like we told you, right through the... 27 rounds. We know that we're already in a better place than this. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to demonstrate 30 rounds for you today, you know? Definitely. Shortly after we wrapped filming, Defense Distributed posted this video on their YouTube page. It shows the latest version of their lower receiver firing over 600 rounds without failure. When we reached out to the ATF for a comment on the story, a representative told us that there are currently no restrictions on an individual manufacturing firearms for personal use. They then directed us towards their FAQ. Then, on March 16th, Defense Distributed announced that the ATF had approved Cody Wilson's application for a federal firearms license. Cody is now able to sell the 3D printed lower receivers, but he won't. I don't think we're utopians. I think the real utopia is the idea that we can go back to the 1990s and everything will be perfect forever. All we're saying is, no, you can't. You know, now there's the internet.